it's Jennifer Lahan with Lahan Home Team with your March 2022 real estate market update. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, we're going to start with the topic of home prices. So we've talked about price appreciation over the last year or two. We've noticed that especially in just the last year, how much it has accelerated. If you look at this chart, you've got January of 2021. We were at about 10%. Now look at January of 2022, 19.1%. So homes are still appreciating. And let's look at the change in prices just over the last year, looking at it in a map per state. You can see that pretty much every state saw appreciation. If you look at Florida, we were at 25.7%. So we were in that top percent of change. The national average was about 17.5%. Look at this over the last five years. So if you look here, you can see the change. Look at Idaho, 118.2%. That was a huge change over the last five years, but even Florida saw 72%. How about home price forecast, right? Well, we've got quite a few differentiations. Um, HPES and Freddie Mac were roughly the same, 6.3 and 6.2. But if you look at CoreLogic, they had the highest uh, forecast at 9.6%. And then we've got Zellman down here with the lowest forecast at 3%. But if we average them all, we get the average of 6.1%. So we're still looking at appreciation or increase in home prices for 2022. At least that is the forecast with everyone. What about supply and demand? Because that's what we've been talking about a lot. Now let's just kind of explain what's the difference between a seller's market and a buyer's market. When you have a seller's market, which is what we're in right now, home prices will appreciate because what's happening is homes are not sitting on the market fast enough. We have more buyers than we do homes on the market. And so that's what makes it a seller's market. Now, you actually can have a neutral market. And in that case, home prices will pretty much only appreciate, uh, sorry, appreciate with inflation, but then you have the buyer's market. That's when you will see home prices depreciate a little bit because now you have more homes on the market with fewer buyers. So buyers have their choice and what you'll find is that homes will tend to sit on the market for longer periods of time. How about new listings? Those have actually been falling, um, falling dramatically actually. Look at your listings from last year. June and July is where we had the peak of new listings. Then we go down to December. That was the lowest of the entire year for 2021. We had 232. Now, I will say it is typical in the winter. We will see less listings on the market, and then you start to see an uptick in the spring and a peak usually in the summer. And we are starting to hit spring, so we'll see how that looks. Active listings also drop again. Now, what's been happening is an active a home will go on the market, it'll become active, but it will quickly go under contract so that it's on pending. So they're not staying active for very long. But the question has been with some about the housing bubble, like we are we in a housing bubble now? Now I've been talking about this for quite a few months now. Look at the years from 2007 to 2010 when we had that housing crash. This is the number of supply of existing homes for sale in December of each of those years. Look at the last four years during from 2018 to 2021. We've had a considerably less, right, supply of homes. So that's really nothing like what we were seeing back in those years. To continue on, look at 2019. Now this was the pre-pandemic year, right, for real estate. And then we start hitting the pandemic year. But existing home sales actually hit a 15-year record. In 2021, we actually saw over 6 million existing home sales. So again, this is nothing like last time. We're also going to talk about loans. So if we look here, when we were having loans, look during these peak years from 2003 to 2007. These were the volume of loans in billions with people who had a credit score of under 620. Remember, that was one of the other reasons that we had that housing crash. People were getting loans that should not have been getting loans. Now look at the last several years, up from 2008 to 2021. You have a lot less loans 
with people who had a credit score of under 620. So what this means is that people who are buying homes now can actually afford those homes. That makes a big difference and that's very important. All right, let's look at net worth. So Lawrence Yoon says, with inventory at an all time low, buyers are still having a difficult time finding a home. But let's look at the net worth of a homeowner versus a renter in 2021. So just from last year, a homeowner's net worth was roughly 300,000. Whereas a renter net worth was about 8,000. This is just taken an average using data. So the net worth of a typical homeowner is about 40 times the net worth of a renter. So still a good idea to own a home. Also, NAR, which is the National Association of Realtors, says that while the booming housing market contributed significantly to the recovery of the U.S. economy, research has consistently shown that home ownership is also associated with multiple economic and social benefits to individual homeowners. Home ownership has always been an important way to build wealth. All right, let's go on to our next topic of home sales. We always look at this average days of the market. Not much has changed, 19 days, so we're still kind of there. Um, unless you're in North Dakota, that one was a lot less, but everything else is about 19 days on average throughout the US. What about existing home sales? So that gray bar is 2020, the light blue is 2021, and then you've got the dark blue. We only go up to January. This is all the data we can get right now is that darker blue, but you can see the existing home sales. So 2021 far exceeded the sales in 2020 overall. And now we've got 2022. We actually had less existing home sales this year for January compared to last year. Overall, this is US national average. We'll get to Orlando at the end. What about new home sales? As I've been talking about, those have skyrocketed. 2020 saw a great year for new home sales. We're still seeing good ones for 2021. And then you can see January of 2022. So this is the new data for this year for new home sales. Still exceeded 2020. New home sales by price. So if you're just curious, what is the distribution of new home sales by price? You can kind of see the biggest one here at 35% are homes between 300 and 399,000. The next biggest one is 29%, which is between homes from 500,000 to 749. Total home sales. So if we look at that, and this is just looking at 2021 and 2022. Again, you can see there was a decline in total home sales this January of 2022. And we saw our peak over the summer months, which we talked about before. Pending home sales, you can see that we've actually very healthy. We've actually had quite a few. We've hit a peak. If you look, this is starting, by the way, if you can't see it, all the way to the left, that starts from January of 2012. So if you look here, January of 2022, we are actually doing very well. So even though we're still in a seller's market, we've got a good amount of pending home sales. But if you want to look at percent of distressed property sales, Again, this left bar up here, this is in 2012. This is how many distressed property sales we had in 2012. Now let's go all the way to this. If you see this dot here, this is in just past January of 2020. It was 4%, not very high. And now look at January 22. We're way down. I would say maybe 1% or just under. So we're actually doing very well uh, as far as foreclosures and short sales go. Now let's get on to home prices. We're looking at the sale price of existing homes. This is year over year. The South is actually now peaking at 18.7%. Northeast had the lowest at 6%. And you can see that the US average was 15.4%. What about change in home prices? So we kind of looked at one in the beginning. Starting from January, 2021, this is year over year. And you can see that we've really been climbing. We hit a peak on July at 20%. And then in December, 18.6%. So again, still appreciating. And how about a year over year change as far as forecast goes? The current is 19.1%, which we saw at the beginning of this uh, slideshow. The forecast is 3.8%. So in other words, hopefully slowing down, not depreciating, but just slowing down as far as appreciation goes. Let's look at the housing inventory. Here's your seller's traffic. Now, look at this map. 
I, I got to say it's getting better. If you remember last year when we looked at the seller traffic, most of the map was in the weak to very weak. We're still weak, but we do have some states that are starting to hit the stable. Of course, Florida's down here. We can see that still on the weak side. And I can tell you, we say that here in the Orlando area as well. New home monthly inventory. Again, they're still doing well. You can see they hit their peak in October, but January still did really well compared to February of last year. And new home monthly inventory, this is non-seasonally adjusted. So if we look at all of these months, you've got quite a few. January did very well, actually. Um, October and November was the best for last year. Now we get into our buyer demand. Buyer activity leaps as 83 markets hit double digits showing per listing. So this is the year-over-year -year increase in showing activity for January of 2022. Michael Lane says that given last year's historic flurry of activity, it's not surprising that buyers were motivated to meet their home ownership goals so shortly after the holidays. Now, if you look at the South, they've done really well, 12.3%. The West, actually not as well, a negative 4.5%. But overall, if we look at the U.S. average, 7.7%. Again, after the holidays, people were starting to buy again. And here's your buyer index map. We always look at these, right? Still strong in most of the U.S. You have some states like South Carolina, West Virginia that are very strong. But overall, still have a lot of buyers throughout the U.S. Now we always have to talk about mortgage rates. They do change. This is just forecast. So every month, depending on what's going on with the economy, what's going on with inflation, we need to look at the projections so right now it's actually going up here if you look at 2023 second quarter they're looking at getting back up to four percent and if you look at the mortgage rate so way over here we're starting in 2018 and then we go here to 2021 and then here is our 2022 forecast because we've already been in the first and second quarter pretty much we're hitting the second quarter now so this is third quarter of 22, fourth quarter, and then you can see second quarter of 2023. Again, nothing has changed. The projections been that they're going to go up by how much that remains to be seen, but we have not had any projections where the mortgage rates are going to go down. Now, look at here. We're starting back here at 2016. You can kind of see how it fluctuated. We actually had a good dip from 2018 all the way down to 2020. And now, if you see, it's been going up. This is in blue, by the way, is what's happened, the actual rates. And then in the orange is your projected rates. What about mortgage credit availability? So lending standards are still quite under control. Here is your uh, historic data. If you look up here at that line up there, that's your housing bubble. bubble. That is when we were at 868.7. Now let's go up current to January of 2022, 124.8. So we are not lending to people who cannot buy. These lending standards are still in place. Average days to close alone, not much has changed. It's been around what we've talked about, like 47, 48, 49. So these have been your average days to close alone. And then your average FICO score. So conventional has been about 755. FHA has been at 676 and then VA at 723. These are for loans that have already closed. So these are the scores, the average scores that people had who closed these particular loans. Okay, look at that. I, I went through this pretty quick, I think. All right, so we're gonna end as we always do with the Orlando update, what's been going on specifically in our city. All right, well, Here's something to note. If you noticed in the maps that I was showing you or in the graphs with the national average, so we're looking at the overall, the whole US, January of 2022 had less sales than January of 2021. But that's not the case here in Orlando. Look at January of 2021, or 2022, sorry. We had more sales than last year. February, more sales than last year. So Orlando, has actually had an average of more sales than we did in 2021, which is good news. That means people are finding homes to buy and we've had an increase in sales. Now let's talk about their average sale price in Orlando. Again, 2022, this year is already exceeding last year's average sale price. February, January, both beat out the months from last year. 
So our average sale price has gone up. In fact, February was around 400,000 for the average sale price. So still seeing tremendous appreciation in the Orlando area. All right, I know I mentioned that we were going to have the buyer and seller guides and now they're ready. So the spring buyer and spring seller guides are ready. If you would like a copy, it's just a free PDF I can send you. You can go to our website at lahanhometeam.com and just let us know by filling out a contact us form and we will send it to you. If you have any questions about the Orlando area or its real estate market, feel free to call us at that number or again, visit our website at lahanhometeam.com. And if you're enjoying our videos, please like and subscribe to our channel. I'll see you next month with the April market update.